Are you interested in the unique Federation starship that showed up in the last episode of Season 1 of Star Trek Picard? Well, join me today as we take a look at printing the Inquiry class. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, with the return of Star Trek Picard Season 2, I wanted to take back and look at the unique Federation battlecruiser that showed up in the last episode. Specifically, the Inquiry class battleship. Well, battlecruiser, really. But, and the ship that we saw was Riker on top of the bridge of the USS Zhang He. So, the Inquiry class, for that time, she's brand new, she's the strongest, fastest ship they've got. So, but what was weird was the whole fleet was Zeng Hei's. That seems a little weird, but you know, hey, we get it, production cuts, stuff like that all happen. But essentially looking at this, it was a gorgeous ship, even though there were kind of three variations within that fleet. And we're gonna print one today. And as you guys can see, I've actually started painting on this one and started moving along. But the Inquiry class, she's a sleek, fast, design with some traditional aspects and some untraditional aspects and some combinations of we've got a triangular like Voyager front section with a Voyager aft section but we've got kind of the sovereign style warp nacelle types to this but all in all a beautiful model as it comes out this one is still very much a paint in progress as you can see like I've only done this side and not that side yet so there's still a lot of work to do but we're going to go out and find this model um, on Colt 3D now Kind of a change here, kind of a weird piece is this is a model that I had to pay for. Um, there are a couple free models out there on Thingiverse that are incomplete. Um, this one was complete, had far better detail, but it did cost a little bit. So if you're interested in printing this ship, there's a little bit of cost involved here, which is very different from one of my videos from before where I usually go find a free model. But I want to promote this one for one because it is a fantastic model. If you guys are interested in it, you should go get it yourself and print it because it is a really good model and the model maker did a fantastic job of promoting it and making it in the detail that it is. So I definitely want to get that out there and get drive traffic to them because um, we're all in this together as 3D printers. Whether we're making it, printing it, someone has to do the work somewhere. So kind of one of those things that is important. But here's what we're going to do today. We're going to go find the model on the internet and show you where to go get it. We're going to slice this guy in Kira. You're going to see the time lapse of it actually being printed and the final product. And then we'll recap here and you'll and we'll close out the video. Simple as that. So if you're new here and you like the content that you see, please hit that subscribe button, join the crew so you get notified of all kinds of other videos that we're putting out here, whether it's actual something with 3D printing machinery or it's going out here and doing a model and how to. So kind of keep that in mind as we go through this because timing for this one is Captain Picard is back with season two and Q and all those fun people are back. So kind of curious to see how season two goes out, but we can discuss that over on a live stream. So every Tuesday night at 8.15 CST is a live stream. I stream for about an hour and a half to almost two hours. Uh, we're either working, painting, who knows what we're gonna do in there, but it'll all be related to 3D printing. If you've got questions about 3D printing, comments down below or shoot me an email. My email's out there on the page. So definitely let me know if you got a question, I'll try to help you guys out. Also, if you hit that like button, I greatly appreciate it. If, definitely if you enjoyed the content, all that interaction does help promote the video so others get to see it too. So I do appreciate that. And with that said, let's hop over to the internet. All right, we've moved over to the computer and as you can see, I'm not on Thingiverse. I'm on Cults 3D. And this is where the model came from. Now you guys notice there, there is a price tag to this model, but I've tried the freebies on Thingiverse. I've tried some of the other ones and they just, they're garbage. And this one works. And the reason why I say it works is because before I ever show you guys any a model that I print or anything, I've done it. I've printed it. It works. So a lot of these cool things with these videos is I'm doing the work for you in some ways. So keep that in mind. This does have a hefty price tag of $13.24. But, in all honesty, compared to a lot of models I've been seeing lately, that price tag is not terrible. So, this is where the model came from. All credit to the model maker, of course. Um, it is a good model. I enjoyed it. And, honestly, I'm enjoying doing the painting on it. Which, I know it's an itty-bitty window here, but you guys can see I'm starting to actually come in 
with the window details and different things like that. So this is where it came from. Now we got to slice it. Now we got to put it on our computer and get this ready for the printer. Catch up with me there. All right, here we are, Kira, the current version, 13.1, is where we are. And the model maker made this model in basically three STL files, the full, the front, and the rear. So you can print it in two pieces if you've got a smaller printer. We're using a CR10 for this one, so I'm gonna do the full shebang, and we're gonna get this guy loaded on here. As you can see, looks really good. No manifold errors, no errors at all, no issues. And because of what this channel does, we make it big. And there she is. Now, after we get the size we want, the orientation we want, the next thing we do, we make sure it is supported. If you don't have this app plugin, I recommend going and getting it from the marketplace right here. You go into the marketplace, and I keep doing that, and you're looking for a plugin called Custom Supports. You install it, reboot Kira, and then you've got these custom supports that be, can just be so handy in saving your project that you can go around and get supports in all these wonderful places that might cause your model to fall over. And just make sure you get a good set of supporting around those warp cells till they build up and we just had a support go completely AWOL out here. We're gonna get that guy deleted and get our stuff back to golden here. And basically you can take these supports and make sure you're well supported. And the cool thing is the raft will build around the support because I do use a raft when I do starships because I want to have a larger build area built on the plate. Um, where this is straight and narrow and if I'm only holding on by these few points my model could fall over and have a bad day and none of us want that so we've got all that this is my standard CR10 settings because um, I'm on my standard profile just scroll through my layer heights my wall thicknesses all these goodies that doesn't look right I usually actually set that to one. Uh, let's see here, infill. This is a model, so I'm gonna do about 5% infill, just to give her some strength. Um, if I was doing this like a toy, I might jump this up to 20, but it's not a toy. This is for sitting painted and looking beautiful on the shelf. As you guys can see, I have been working on mine, uh, slowly but surely painting. Um, I know I don't show this a lot, except on the live streams, but I am working on actually painting this one and making it look rather rather beautiful so uh, let's see here material I'm doing PLA plus from inland on this one so I'm going to be doing 215 for my temperature and 50 for my glass plate because uh, I do use glass bed my speeds are all pretty straight standard and cooling is pretty standard support I'm gonna do the auto generated support just as a secondary with my custom support here because there are a few places that one a custom support just isn't going to work well and two an auto generator support is also going to bind some of the stuff together and make it even stronger so and i'm only going to do 80. Um, if you take it down it adds more support uh, but i don't feel like i need more than 80 right now and then the final settings that i'm going to adjust is my raft and with a tall model like this just for safety i'm going to bump mine to a raft of 10 so it's gonna come out more around and connect all of these. So let's hit that slice button and take a look. And if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, I am doing this on my MacBook. Cure is kind of the same on both for the most part, other than a few features that are in one that are not the other, uh, because Mac, meh. But again, it's kind of one of those things to keep in mind that when you're slicing these, try your orientations out, try different ways. Now a lot of times you'll see these models like this pop in and they're laying flat and that's going to use a ton of support and create a bunch of contact points, which you don't want. Where like this one, I don't have a ton of contact points because everything was pretty much back here. And when the model was printed this way, very few points, the only trick was getting the warp cells to actually build up 
and get to the warp, get the supports connected, the warp struts to connect. Once that was done, this model was a pretty safe build. Um, which is usually the bane of existence on most Star Trek models is getting the warp nacelles, which you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, go over there, Rise 3D Printing, um, and you see that a lot of times I'll have ships that have lost their warp nacelles. A good example is the latest Voyager print that I did that I had to actually cut the nacelles off, print new nacelles, and then put them back on there. So kind of keep that in mind as you go through. Now, I didn't notice, like this support, I just need to nix it, but that's neither here nor here. But you guys were seeing how I put this model together to try to get the print. And that's why a lot of times, before I even do the video, I have already printed the model. I know how to get it done. And that way I can impart good knowledge over to you guys. And honestly, sometimes what works for me may not work for you. And we got to keep that in mind as we go through here. So now we've got this finally sliced. So let's take a look at the preview of what's going to come. This, and the cool thing about previewing here is it's going to show you the auto generator supports where it touches and how much it's going to use. And 250 grams of filament for one of these, not bad at all. And you can see the raft down there, how it's building out. The impulse engines are getting the bulk of the support and mixing in with our custom supports. So all in all, pretty great print. So with further ado, let's hop over to the printer and let's see this one printed and I will see you guys on the other side. That's the print. It was done with a CR10 V2. Very nice print, very clean. Not a lot of supports needed. It came out really, really well. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you got questions, comments, or email, and make sure you hit that like, because that helps us out and gets more people to get to see this cool stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video.